the Caribbean region has a diverse array of culture which makes it unique. Especially when compared to other regions throughout the world. The diversity of culture throughout the Caribbean includes the means used to communicate, language, music and dance. Some commonality exists however with regards to the history of the Caribbean region. The variety of languages, music and dance which exist within the Caribbean are closely linked inherent culture which have been spawned from the ancestral homes in Africa or Asia. The most common language used within the Caribbean in English. However as highlighted in a previous paper, the number of Spanish-speaking persons within the Caribbean far exceed the English-speaking total. Regardless of the language spoken there exists a language referred to as dialects or broken language. This language is officially referred to as Creole. Why Creole? The term Creole is referred to as an in-between language. During the era of slavery, slave traders traded slaves from several sections of Africa, although Africa is a single mass of land referred to as a continent, having several countries defined by borders and culture. The language which exists amongst all differs. The transportation and distribution of slaves throughout the Caribbean region by different European traders created a language barrier between men and slaves. The European masters of the day attempted to socialize their slaves into speaking their language and adopting their varying cultural traditions. In an attempt to communicate with their fellow African slave an in-between language was created. In Jamaica this language is referred to as Patois. Throughout the Caribbean varying Creole languages were created. Thus the Caribbean region has a multi-language aesthetic which makes it unique. Today there exist French Creole, English Creole, Spanish, Portuguese Creole and Dutch Creole languages. The European label simply refers to the source from which these languages took most of their vocabulary. The Creole language was created by using the phonologies of the already established languages mixed with pattern of pronunciation found in patterns of several African languages. The difference between the Creole language and the established languages, Spanish, French, English, and Dutch, is syntax used. The syntax of the Creole is very distinct from that of the European languages from which they take most of their vocabulary. Two possibilities exist. One view advocated by linguists is that the syntax comes from the West African languages. Another argument is that the syntax was started from scratch, relying on linguistic universals which the early speakers had to resort to in a slave plantation situation where there was no common, shared language. What is sure is that the Caribbean Creole languages have features of their syntax in common which are not shared by the European languages from which they take their vocabularies. Thus, French, Spanish, Portuguese, English and Dutch Creoles share syntactic features not shared by French, Spanish, Portuguese, English or Dutch. In some cases Creole came into existence as a result of the change in colonial masters. As discussed before several islands throughout the Caribbean were recolonized from their original colonial leaders. The change of language from Spanish to English facilitates a unique in-between language referred to as Creole. This is why many linguists would argue that the vocabulary of a Creole language has nothing necessarily to do with a single European language mixed with a West African language, which is currently the official language of the country. This explains the Creole languages of Suriname that is Sranan, Jika, and Saramakan, both Creole language have a vocabulary predominantly from English, even though the official language of Suriname is Dutch. Another example of the above described can be seen in Guyana. In Guyana there are two extinct or near-extinct Dutch Creoles, that is Berbus Dutch and Skepi, even though the official language of Guyana is English. Guyana at one point in their history was ruled by the Netherlands, in Aruba, Bonaire and Curaçao, Papiamentu, a Spanish, Portuguese Creole is widely spoken in countries where Dutch is the official language. Finally, in Dominica and Saint Lucia, French Creole or Creole as it is currently being referred to, is in use. This is the case even though these countries have English as their official language. Even in Grenada and Trinidad, there are small communities of French Creole speakers even though these countries have had English as an official language for nearly two centuries. The above validate the argument that Creoles did not exist amongst slaves but amongst ancestral descendants in order to comprehend communication as colonial rule change. 
Throughout the Caribbean, the linguistic diversity of the islands is numerous. Some Creole language has become extinct while others are emerging. Scholars throughout the region regard the Creole as a part of indigenous cultures which have survived the impact of European colonization. Throughout the Caribbean there is an estimated 70 languages, sing languages, ritual languages, pigeons, and creoles based on the colonial languages, principally Spanish, English, French, Dutch, but also heavily influenced by African and indigenous languages. For centuries, the Caribbean has been one of the world's great linguistic laboratories. Throughout the Caribbean, the diversity of languages which exist represents languages throughout the world. To a great extent, the reality exists where there has been a linguistic genocide regarding the speaking of Creole throughout the region and the speaking of the indigenous language of the Caribbean. During the years of European colonization of the Caribbean, Many indigenous languages disappeared due to widespread physical elimination of the populations speaking these languages. During slavery, some slave masters prohibited the speaking of languages they did not know. As a result our ancestors adopted the language of their colonizers. Their language died. A language will not survive if the older generation does not use it with the younger generation. With the disappearance of domains within which indigenous languages would naturally be used, opportunities for cross-generational transmission disappeared. Every new generation is a link in the transmission of the languages of the community into which they are born. Each generation does this by naturally acquiring, through exposure, the knowledge and use of languages of the community within which they live. Language transmission in the Caribbean was a problem, as we shall see even before the arrival of the Europeans in the late 15th century. However, this has been transformed into a crisis in the post-Columbus Caribbean. There has been a massive disappearance of languages previously in use. In effect, the European presence produced a huge deterioration in the conditions that existed for an estimated 300 years prior to European colonization of the West. European conquest in the Caribbean did not simply involve the introduction of European languages and the destruction of indigenous ones. Simultaneously with these two processes, a third was taking place. New languages, Creole languages, were being created. These produced a new linguistic diversity, partly coexisting with the old, partly replacing it. With the introduction of plantation agriculture by the European conquerors, new communities were assembled to produce plantation crops. The bulk of the plantation labor force was constituted from Africans, mainly West Africans, imported as slaves from their countries of origin. New languages, fit for the new communities assembled to operate in this new environment, were created and assumed to have been the case on early Caribbean plantations, manned by African slave labor assembled from various parts of West Africa and without a common language. The European language of the dominant group provides the vocabulary for these new languages. The syntax, however, comes from the built-in predisposition of children to learn language. When exposed to coherent forms of language, they will simply learn the languages used in the environment. When the language of the environment is incoherent as a result of the use of a rudimentary and unstructured pidgin as a lingua franca, these children will create a new one based on innate biologically conditioned models of what constitutes the syntax of language. Dance in the Caribbean Although festival and street dancing are the most well-known form of dancing throughout the Caribbean, tourists interested in enjoying more formal dancing can find various venues that sponsor it, but the most talented performers often travel to other parts of the world. There are numerous forms of dancing throughout the region but ballet and folk dancing are the most popular forms. Swan Lake is a popular ballet, and Jamaican Jankanyu dancing is a popular form of folk dancing throughout the Caribbean. Many Caribbean dance troupes perform throughout the world and introduce people attending these shows distinct Caribbean styles. As a result, people do not necessarily have to travel to the Caribbean to enjoy its unique culture. In Caribbean ballet performances, local cultures are often infused into them. For example, beautifully decorated costumes are worn by members of the world-renowned ballet Martiniquais. National folkloric ballet groups can also be found in Puerto Rico and Aruba. 
those traveling to Puerto Rico can enjoy the historic ballet Concierto de Puerto Rico. Many dancers from the Caribbean have gone on to, to perform with world-famous ballet groups. Alicia Alonso, one of Cuba's most famous ballerinas, had a brief stint dancing with New York ballet groups until going home to Cuba to be a part of the country's national ballet. Another Caribbean ballerina, Michelle Jimenez, is a part of the Washington Ballet. She is originally from the Dominican Republic. People from the Caribbean migrating to different parts of the world have brought their unique dance culture with them. For example, Toronto's Ballet Creole combines Caribbean and African styles to create a truly distinctive dance form. Local Dances Music can be heard wherever people congregate in the Caribbean. Distinctive musical styles can be found on each island, but each musical style is designed for dancing. Latin Beats Mambo dancing was a huge craze in Havana during the last decade and later became popular in Harlem. This dance style eventually was transformed into salsa dancing. Distinctive elements of Caribbean and African culture have been mixed in with salsa dancing, but it is still similar to mambo dancing. Meringue dancing originated from Haiti and the Dominican Republic. However, two separate stories exist about the dance's origins. According to one tale, a group of people began imitating an injured war veteran out of pity for him after he struggled to dance at a celebration. However, some people claim the dance originated from the slave plantations. While they were working in the sugar fields, slaves would slowly move their feet to a drum's beat as they walked across the plantations with heavy chains around their feet. Meringue dancing is very easy to learn. Because little space is required to perform the dance, people on crowded dance clubs can try it out. Bashata dancing is a mixture of bolero and meringue dancing. The rumba is a slow and sultry style of dancing where only a small dance floor is required. On the other hand, a more up-tempo form of dancing combing elements of the mambo and rumba is known as the cha-cha. French Rhythms Zouk music and dance was inspired by Brazilian lambada but originated in the French-speaking areas of the Caribbean. This form of dance combined salsa, meringue, and reggae dance with a speedier beat. In fact, translated from French Creole the word Zouk means party. Biggin dancing is a slower version of the rumba originating in Martinique and Guadeloupe. Cole Porter wrote a song about Biggin dancing that popularized it. Other dances practiced throughout the Caribbean which could be linked to our, African, inherent culture are listed below. Dinky Mini originates from the Congolese word Ndini which means lamentation or funeral song. Dinkies are celebratory occasions. Although associated with death, the music is lively joyous, and exciting, intending to cheer the family and friends of the dear person. Dinky Mini was practiced openly throughout slavery but is now done mainly during our annual festival celebration. Kumina The dance in a Kumina ritual is led by either a king or queen. Kings or queens are usually knowledgeable of the customs, practices, rhythms of the drums and traditional songs through which spirits are called. It is strongly believed that during a ceremony the spirits travel through white rum, sugar, cream soda, candles, water, which is usually carried on the head to catch the spirit, and coconut, believed to contain the power to prevent harm. Goat or foul blood is also mixed with white rum and sprayed to the spirit. Brukens belongs to the creolized group of traditional dances, which came into existence to celebrate the emancipation of slavery in August 1834. Brukens takes the form of a pageant, with a processional parade of kings, queens, courtiers, known as grandsons and granddaughters, soldiers and pages. The music is an amalgam of European and African element, the drum being the main instrument that is used to accompany the singing. Two double-headed drums are used, the bass drum is played with a padded stick, and the rattler with two slender sticks. Brukens is a part of our treasured heritage. However, its popularity has declined significantly over the years. John Cunyu, called John Canoe by the British, is a band of masqueraders which usually perform in towns and villages at Christmas time. The John Cunyu customs go as far back as the days of slavery, but at the time the bands were very large and elaborate. Characters in the John Cunyu masquerade were quite frightening to onlookers. Masqueraders were dressed in costumes such as king and queen 
cow head, horse head, devil, pitchy patchy, red Indians and belly woman. Occasionally a mock policeman, masquerader, would be added to keep onlookers in order. This practice dates back to when parades, including John Cunyu, were outlawed. The policeman, in trying to enforce the law, was often overtaken by the drum rhythm, forgot his duties and joined in the merriment. Ska, regarded as the forerunner of reggae music, was popularized by the late Don Drummond and the Scat Alites during the early 1960s. It could be described as Jamaicanized version of the North American rhythm and blues, R&B. Ska was replaced by rock steady in the mid-1960s. Its decline had been attributed to the death of Don Drummond and the disbanding of its mass ambassador, the Scat Alites. Rock Steady, the Ska and Rock Steady were similar in movements. The main difference was the beat of the music. In essence, Rock Steady was a slower, somewhat erotic version of Ska, with elements of American rhythm and blues and the mento. With the slower beat, musicians were free to experiment with more complicated melodies. With the wider use of electronic instruments, horns were replaced by guitars, rhythms and solo, and the bass line became more complex and more melodic. In rock steady, the dancer would try to keep his, her feet as steady as possible. He would then shift his weight from one foot to the other very slowly. At the same time he or she would shake his, her shoulder to the beat of the music while rocking the rest of his, her body. Reggae Rock Steady had a fairly short lifespan. By the end of the 1960s the music had become more up-tempo and the popular reggae is born. It is slower version of rock steady music and is characterized by its heavy, often repeated bass. Like its forerunners ska and rock steady, reggae songs often contain a message, political, religious or social. There is also a strong element of Rastafarianism in the music. Dance Hall what began sometime in the 70s and blossomed in the 80s as a mere exhortation to the crowd to dance at a session led to the birth of DJing. DJs were a new set of champions of the music who spoke to the masses. Patrons at dances began to compare the ability of each DJ to motivate or rock the crowd and eventually this caught on, with artists trying to ride the rhythm, chanting in tune with the beat, while at the same time creating with witty lyrics. Calypso is a phenomenon of the Eastern Caribbean. With a forward-moving rhythm, its early forms bear a close relationship to Mento. However, the African heritage of Calypso can be clearly seen in this genre. West Africans, ancestors of the New World black men, often sang songs of praise and songs of ridicule and mockery. Their professional street singers and community choirs performed these songs which relied on choral rhyme, the dancing chorus the call and response order that are similar to native songs of the old Guinea coast. Even the name Calypso or, Kaizo, can be traced to a West African source. In conclusion to this paper, there are numerous cultural retentions which exist within the cultures existing in the Caribbean today. Regardless of the varied subculture which now exists in Kihi Caribbean region, our historical past makes us unified. The vast array of languages including creoles which exist within this region creates a unique cultural heritage. The influence of our ancestral culture has continued to influence how we relate to each other. The adoption of customs from other region and the creativity we use to transform these customs into a aesthetic of this region is so overwhelming. The music and the dances practiced throughout this region are numerous to be researched and mentioned in this paper. However, this paper have created a framework which should guide us as we sojourn forward, to learn from our past. It is a given that the impact our history have had on our past, present and possible future descendants, will create a dynamic socio-cultural heritage endemic to this geographical region. As the region continues to evolve the flavor of our African ancestor should still be visible.